What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force and here today we will be taking a look at more Skyforge. I specifically wanted to show you the five man dungeons in this game. At the moment, in the closed beta, there is one available. This is the Mare Sacro Monastery. Uh, it's a five man dungeon like you expect it to be. You're gonna queue up and they'll give you three DPS, a tank, and a support. Now the difference though in this game is that the support classes don't heal. The support classes can help out the team very tremendously. We're specifically talking about the Lightbinder here. The Lightbinder has access to two shields. However, the shortest duration one has a 20 second cooldown. And then that's a single target shield. There's also a group shield, which I believe that cooldown is around 40 or 50 seconds. I know this because I've actually uh, played the Lightbinder in this dungeon uh, several times. So I, I know it from the perspective of DPS and from the perspective of support. But the point is, you can't rely on heals. You can't rely on a healer and tank to carry you through a dungeon. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. You've gotta make sure you're dodging uh, big attacks. You gotta make sure that you're interrupting, using crowd control. All of that stuff is very important. So I guess, uh, in a way, it's sort of similar to the Zergfest <laughs> dungeons. Uh, that, you know, Guild Wars 2 was accused of having this problem, that without the Holy Trinity, it's just sort of a, kind of a face roll. But I would say this is, this is an interesting game because it's got a combination, right? It does have the Holy Trinity. It's got a tank, it's got support, it's got DPS. The difference being, like the tank can hold aggro, but he also has to be paying attention to CC and dodging. And, and it's really, instead of healing, it's more the situational awareness by every one of the team uh, utilizing health globes properly, which I found a majority of the time the health globes will be going to any of the melee characters. So if you have like, if you had your tank and then three melee DPS, that could be a huge headache. In fact, I, I could see that being a tremendous problem if that were your group setup, because it's really the case that the melee characters are the ones who need those health globes. And if any ranged people are picking them up, then they're probably doing it wrong. Cause there's, unless you unless the range character is just not paying attention and pulling aggro, then there's really there's really no reason that they should be taking too much damage because most if not all of the damage beyond pulling aggro is avoidable uh so at the start here we're just killing a bunch of trash there are several packs we need to uh take care of before we uh, move forward but let's go ahead and skip forward to opening up the gates and moving on to the next section So once we've killed enough trash packs, the gate opens up and we've got a couple more packs to go through. Uh, you come up to this area that has this never ending uh, spawn of enemies and they're basically going to keep coming until you kill this little mini boss that's in this upcoming room. So we've got to clear through the trash packs and deal with that never ending spawn. Um, as I talked about before, it is pretty important from my experience thus far that you are careful as DPS not to pull aggro. Now this could be, I haven't played the tank class yet, I've spent no time with the Paladin, so this could potentially be the side effect of bad tanks who can't taunt off of you. But I, I really don't know what the Paladin class has access to in terms of its tanking capabilities and if taunts are even an option. Uh, something else that's also very important, if you end up picking up this game and you run through this dungeon, these Ice Abyss uh, Naiads here, they need to die. They need to be, even though they're like a tanky class, you notice that shield above uh, the nameplate there, they are an incredible nuisance to your team. They basically have this uh, casting animation, this ability that will lock people down in a bubble and deal a pretty significant amount of damage. So once those things die, it becomes a lot easier to manage these groups. There's a couple of different packs. Uh, so this one here, and then I think like one or two more in the prior room, the one that we, that we opened up taking a look at, that first section of the dungeon. Uh, so make sure those things die quickly. It might be 100% avoidable, I really don't know. I've run this dungeon about 15 times now, um, 10 or so times on my light binder, and only five times as DPS. I decided to show you gameplay of the DPS uh, just, just because I thought this was a pretty awesome run. And this was actually just after I learned about being able to use the dodge mechanic as a uh, animation canceling uh, ability. Uh, so basically there's a lot of abilities that my class, the Berserker here, has that will put up a, a fairly lengthy, or, and we're talking, you know, like two to, two to three seconds, but lengthy in the midst of combat, a fairly lengthy cast animation. However, you can use the game's dodge mechanic, those three time charges that I have, to actually 
still have the uh, ability apply, but then skip the animation that you'd have to wait through typically. So I recently discovered that over the past uh, 24 or so hours, and I've been using that to incredible effectiveness. It's, it's really a lot of fun. Uh, so once more, these little spawns, we're waiting for the tank here, but once more, these little spawns will keep coming until you uh, kill this boss here. So we're just going to move on in and start smacking away at him. Now, I'm going to focus 100% on bursting this guy down as fast as humanly possible, uh, because then that's going to stop the uh, ads from coming. The, the, basically, what I've found useful here is to have your best single target DPS focus on him, and then your best AOE DPS focus on the ads. I know it's kind of a herder moment, but there's been many situations where I've seen like the paladins trying to kill the ads, and I'm like, dude, no, tank the boss, let the single DPS uh, <laughs> burn him down, and then let our cryomancers take care of those ads. That is far and away the uh, the best way that we can you can possibly do this section. And it's interesting because this dungeon is is, is fairly lengthy. Uh, with an average time between 30 and 40 minutes. The game says the estimated time's 40, but I found most groups finish it in about 30 to 35. Uh, it's fairly lengthy, but there's only two bosses. It's this mini boss right here, as well as the final boss, and that's it. Like, it's... It's, it's, it's the, it, with only two bosses, most of your, it just goes to show you that most of the time that you're spending in this dungeon is actually killing the trash. And those larger trash packs, uh, specifically the ones with those ice naiads that I mentioned a moment ago, those were, are really what's going to cause your biggest headache. Okay, so then we work through this guy, we make our way into the next room, which just has a bunch of small ads, and uh, frankly, I found that you can just group them up and, and just burn them down, no problemo, They're, they don't do a lot of damage, and you should have enough AoE between all the classes in your group to pretty easily take care of them. But then we have got the final boss. So this is Lita the Conqueror. It is the final boss here in the Mare Sacro Monastery. And I actually really like this fight. It's only got a couple of mechanics to pay attention to, but the first few runs that I've done of this uh, dungeon, that people had no idea what was going on, and it was kind of hilarious because people kept getting blown up. But pretty simple MMO mechanics. Uh, the first of which is these geysers right here. She's going to plop them on the ground, a lot of times nearby where people are standing, if not directly on top of you. And after a couple of seconds, it explodes, and you just need to make sure you're not on top of it when it explodes. As you can see here, you can still be standing pretty close to it, and it not be that big of a deal. But if you are on top of it, you're going to take a lot of lot of damage, uh, like just like that, me getting blown up in the face. And you've been seeing here as well, if you pay attention, me using that animation canceling. So I start the animation, I dodge forward to skip it, and that uh, buys me a couple of seconds to move into my next attack. That, that's what I was talking about earlier. So beyond the geysers that come up, her her second mechanic here is that she puts up this bubble and summons two ads. Now you don't want to stand in the bubble, it's a bad idea, stay away from the bubble and kill the ads. Now a, a nuisance can be that these guys will tend to actually walk in, so if you can push them out, but unfortunately uh, one of my teammates managed to suck them right into the center, which is really, really annoying. And as I mentioned, you don't really want to go in there, so I'm just going to stay out here and uh, pop this damage on their faces just like that. Just do a little earthquake, try to damage him down, plus, plus our range classes, we should be able to take care of business. And there's our paladin, uh, bravely trying to walk into the bubble, but you don't want to walk into the bubble. It's, it just hurts. It's very painful. It is very painful indeed. And then once the bubble's gone down, once you've killed the ads, the bubble will drop, and then you just rinse and repeat as you try to make your way through these 20 health bars here for Lita the Conqueror. It's a good thing they took me along on this dungeon, though, because I just tear through those health bars. I do so much damage. It is hilarious. Well, I guess that pretty much does it, guys, for taking a look here at the Mare Sacro Monastery. Once more, this just happens a few more times until you finish off our health bars, and then that's essentially it. Uh, you know, I do enjoy the dungeon. I, okay, the biggest thing with this game is I, I like the gameplay. I really do. It, it just, it's, it's, it's been fun to play. This game has its problems. Number one, at this point in the closed beta, there's just so little content that I just got burned out on doing those same missions over and over again. But because it's so fun to actually play, I just kind of stuck with it. 
Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I don't have much else going on. But I, regardless, I've been enjoying it. Um, although, with that said, this might do it for my coverage of Skyforge for now at least. I don't feel like I have too much more to show you. I've leveled up the Berserker as well as the, uh, the Light Binder. And I've shown you gameplay of both of those classes. And I don't know that I'm going to be leveling up another class. The first closed beta is ending very shortly anyways. But in the future, once more content is added, uh, there may very well be more coverage from me. Uh, taking a look, hopefully, at the other dungeons and maybe seeing some new areas. And then just sort of giving you an update as to how the game is. Because although I have fun playing with it, uh, the game itself, the gameplay, I definitely feel like it's got a bit of room for improvement, to say the least. All right, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy the content. Have a fantastic afternoon, and I'll see you later.